teaching on when Jesus is there. John chapter 2 verse 1 to 12. Now on the third day, Jesus' mother went to a wedding feast in the Galilean village of Cana. Jesus and his disciples were all invited to the banquet. But with so many guests, they ran out of wine. And when Mary realized it, she came to Jesus and asked, They have no wine. Can't you do something about it? Jesus replied, My dear one, don't you understand that if I do this, it will change nothing for you, but it will change everything for me. My hour of unveiling, my power has not yet come. Mary then went to the servants and told them, whatever Jesus tells you, do. Whatever he tells you, just do. Thereby stood six stone water pots meant to be used for the washing of rituals. Each one could hold about 20 gallons or more. Jesus came to the servants and instructed them, fill the pot with water right up to the very brim. Then he said, now fill your pitchers and take them to the master of ceremonies. And when they poured out their pitchers for the master of ceremonies to sample, the water had become wine. When he tasted the water that had become wine, the master of ceremony was impressed with its quality. Although he didn't know where the wine came from. I will from. give you some silent points. I won't be able to teach deep in it because of time. What I saw in this scripture. Number one, I saw Jesus walking in accordance to time. In life, everything answers to timing. Can I say to you, there is no need for you to rush ahead of your time. Jesus understood the timing and seasons and said to them, He said, Mother, my time is not yet come. Any of you, you fast 40 days, then you think it's shocking, you want to go and start ministry. If that 40 days doesn't mean ministry is here to start. Oh, because God used you one day and you just sang here, and one or two people fell down. People falling doesn't mean that anything has changed in their life. Oh, because you cannot teach in Sunday school now and people say you are eloquent, then you believe you have God's grace so much huh? and you begin to talk with pride. Brother, calm down. You thought some people have been teaching 30 years and are not stopped teaching now. They are still teaching. There is a timing. No need to rush ahead of your time. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? No need to rush ahead of your time. Jesus understood that. And that's what many of us we are doing here. We are unable to wait for the timing of God for our life. If God must multiply you, God answers multiplication. God answers that answer when the right timing comes. Be patient with God. Number two thing I saw here is I saw humility. I saw humility. Jesus could have stepped out in the wedding. Say, aha, it's time for them to recognize me now. <laughs> My mother, you came to tell me, everybody stop this ceremony right now. Let's pray. And God will do something here. After all, I'm the son of God. He could do that. Is that not so? He could show. And now, in the name of Jesus, you this water turn to wine. And you know the funny thing? Water will turn to wine. Because he's God. But he didn't do that. Instead, he said, Mother, my time has not yet come for my glory to be revealed. That is a timing. Humility brings your timing on time. After Jesus humbled himself, his time came that same time. Please humble yourself. It is important for us to be humble. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. He said, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. But look at what, Complete. Look at what James chapter 4 says, verse 6. He said, but he gives more grace. Can you see? He gives what? More when you are humble, it attracts favor to your direction. When you are proud, people think you have it, just so they are not even able to help you. They are not able to help you. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2. The Bible says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. When pride comes into a man's life, automatically it's easy access for disgrace to come. <laughs> when pride comes, comes disgrace. But with humility, the Bible says wisdom comes. Wisdom comes. Number three thing I notice about that scripture is that Mary noticed people's pain and did not wait for people to tell her before she responded to their pain. Very quickly, can I advise you that not every time people will tell you what they are going through, recognize it and do something about it. 
The Bible said, and she observed that there was no more wine. I want you to take the kind of heart of Mary. She only noticed that the wine was not enough. And it was as if it was her own thing. Listen, there are people like that, we call them burden bearers. They carry your matter for their head as if it is for their selflessness. I call those people burden bearers. Mary had a pure heart. Please have a pure heart. You know, people like Mary in your marriage and in your situation, you can never know shame. Mary stood in the place to make sure that the couples were not disgraced. So God will always give you people that will never make you to be embarrassed. Can I also pray the prayer on another point? Those couples were about to be disgraced, but thank God for Mary. In, in fact, the glory we say go to Jesus, but Jesus didn't even know anything was happening. It was Mary that brought his notice to what was happening for adventure. Number five, submit to God's will. And when Mary left, Mary told them, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And then he did. Whatever Mary, whatever Jesus tells you to do, just do. So if you want God to bless you and multiply you, please be sensitive to submission and obedience to God. Be sensitive. So when you submit to God, God gives you to in conformity to his will. Number six, obey God no matter how foolish it means. No matter how foolish. Jesus said to them, he said, bring me the jars. They're like, what is this man doing? They said, there's no wine. He said, you should bring us jars that has no water inside. No matter how foolish, please obey God. At times, God will be giving us instructions. It won't make sense. Just obey and just follow. Just go. Because with God, nothing ends. And I'm honest with you, it never finishes once you step out in obedience just to follow God. As I close, like I told you, obey God no matter what. Let's be on our feet.